detain Consul Antoinette and baby will be able to spend the end of the year 2021 with family members in Boya in the southwest region of Cameroon. The lady who was controversially arrested on alleged allegations and accusations of having links with a self-styled separatist general no pity has been released on bail today by the court in Buya. Meantime, military officials are accused of having killed two persons in Chang in the Menor Division of the West Region of Cameroon. We shall be taking you to Nwa Subdivision where the people have continued to cry what they qualify as an abusive neglect of Nwa by the central government in Cameroon. Nwa, according to them, is the oldest division in Cameroon but unfortunately does not have roads, electricity and other very important social structures and we shall also be talking about the prices of basic commodities in the second part of business cast with our guests. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for choosing to listen to information, getting connected on the best of television channel, Equinox. It is a shock in Chang, in the Menor Division of the West Region of Cameroon. Family members of two individuals who died are accusing uh, military officials of having killed uh, two of theirs. The two persons uh, reportedly died after a fight in a nightclub in the town of uh, Chang, chief town of the Menor of the West Region of Cameroon. The fight, according to a witness accounts, involved a civilian and a military official who in turn called a reinforcement from his colleagues of the army who came and unfortunately the civilians concerned died as Smart Njikangebe tells us in the following report. 24-year-old Atefak Philbert and an unidentified man have lost their lives due to a fight which occurred at the ninth club in Chang, West Region of Cameroon. Reports say that the fight was between a military officer and a civilian who called his colleagues for reinforcement. According to report, Philbert, who died, was an innocent civilian. My junior brother was killed by the military. He was coming out from another snack bar and was heading home when he stopped to see what was happening in this snack bar. There he was mistaken for another person feared in the locality. The man named Komise had a fight with some military officer and ran away after a reinforcement came. My junior brother was caught and beaten to death innocently. Les personnes qui ont essayé de venir ne serait-ce que le transporter quand il est respiré encore pour aller à l'hôpital, ils ont interdit, ils ont braqué l'arme sur l'ensemble des civils qui étaient là. According to the family, Philbert Atefak is a young man with good morals and they are hoping that with the aid of the security camera around the snack bar, justice will be brought to their dead brother. The zone where the incident occurred has been sealed and at the Chang mortuary, Family members of the dead and other top authorities were spotted in the zone. An incident linked to heightening security in the town of Chang and the rest of the main division of the West Region of Cameroon few days to the end of the year 2021. An insecurity is also threatening the economic capital city as days narrowed to end of year festivities in the night it was a morning in a family last night it was a morning in a family that's in the new bell neighborhood of the dweller to municipality where a 17 year old boy uh, reportedly got stabbed there in a mass fight at the Makia neighborhood of uh, the Dweller 2 municipality. That was yesterday, the 14th of December 2021. According to information gotten by Equinox Radio and Television, the fight erupted in the late hours of uh, Tuesday involving youth of the very notorious Makia neighborhood of the city of Douala. We take you to our top story, the incident concerning uh, insecurity 
also in the town of Ibulova, Ibulova, which is the chief town of the south region of Cameroon. The people are angry. They think that the security <coughs> officials in the city of Ibulova can no longer uh, protect them adequately. They are questioning the effectiveness of men in uniform who, according to them, are always parading streets across the town of Ibulova at a time that many, according to them, are still being killed uh, ruthlessly by individuals of the underworld. Innocent as it tells us more in the following report that projects the protest of the angry people of the area after one of theirs was killed. The killing of a 33-year-old man and rice integration in Ebolova, south region of Cameroon, are the reasons why the disgruntled inhabitants riots, barricade rules, and burn materials. What we deplore is the heavy presence of security forces in unnecessary places and periods whereas they have to watch over us at night, they have to patrol all the streets. They are not doing their job professionally. That is why insecurity is on the rise in Ebolova. Even after killing of our brother at night, security and administrative officials have been mute. We have no choice than protest this way to attract their attention. According to the population, even when some gendarmes learned of the murder, they rather intimidated them instead of visiting the murder scene. Le matin, personne, aucune autorité n'est venue. Et quand nous, on s'est rebellé là, c'est la brigade d'Angale qui est arrivée. Au lieu de venir d'abord sur le lieu du crime, ils ont plutôt commencé à nous menacer. As the end of year feast and Afghan draw near with rise in crime wave, the population of Ebolova expect security officials to take special dispositions to ensure their elements guarantee their security to the maximum, especially in streets and not just bars. And from the south, we take you to the southwest region of Cameroon to say that Consul Antoinette and Baby will be able to spend the end of year festivities with their family members. Consul Antoinette gained her freedom today through a bill that was obtained and secured by lawyers who've been standing and defending her, mainly human rights lawyers who've been closed and standing by Consul Antoinette she was, since she was controversially arrested in Buya and detained. And she severally appeared in a court hearing in Buya and was always accompanied by human rights defenders and uh, non governmental organizations defending the rights of persons in uh, Cameroon. Consul Antoinette, the lady who was arrested pregnant, gave birth while in detention. She was accused of uh, having links with self styled wanted separatist general, no pity. The lawyer spoke shortly after her arrest. And first, we shall be listening to an extract of Baristan Kia Emmanuel, who says Consul Antoinette will still appear before the judge uh, and uh, before a final judgment is passed on her. Take a listen to Baristan Kia Emmanuel. This is This means that uh, she will have to report before the examining magistrate again each time she is required to do so to answer to the allegations to complete the investigations that have been conducted against her. But each time she's going there, we will be with her. I will urge this very strong delegation of women that have appeared here to come and to support her because it should not end at this level. You know, and, uh, we hope that they will do so. The examining magistrate being a military man in you know, a certain manner military at the same in a military fashion. And we are trying to see that whether you are a military crossing or a civilian crossing. And also uh, in Buya, present at the court was the lead lawyer of the team of lawyers defending Consul Antoinette, Barrister Edward Ewole uh, Lyonga, who uh, said he was satisfied that at least they will see some fairness. And the judge, judges in Buya demonstrated that the justice system in Cameroon could still be trusted by Cameroonians. For us, a great deal for the family of Madame Fonso and Toinette, a great deal for human rights, and a very wonderful day for them. 
for the begging and even for justice because you have seen great justice. Many people doubted the justice system of our country, but to be honest with you, the judges of the inquiry control chambers have shown us great justice. We have granted bail to Madam Consul and Tranet amongst all us. Nobody trusted the justice department of this country, but we are happy that justice has been granted. She has been granted bail, and you can see all the women groups here today. We are here to give support to Madam Consul and Tranet and the baby. She's Barrister Edward Iwole Leonga, who is the lead uh, lawyer or the lead counsel of the team of lawyers defending Consul Antoinette, the lady who was controversially arrested while she was eight months pregnant, detained in Boya. She delivered while in detention in Boya. She's, however, been freed on bail. And we shall be taking you to the neighboring northwest, one of the English speaking regions of Cameroon, where the inhabitants of Ngua, one of the subdivisions with over 42 villages say that Ngua is uh, surely and um, undoubtedly one of the oldest subdivisions in Cameroon but has been abusively neglected by the central government in Cameroon. Ngua, according to them, is the only subdivision in Cameroon with no uh, roads, electricity and uh, adequate infrastructures in terms of health and education. Mbustela traveled all the way from the Northwest Regional Chief Town Bamenda to Ngua in the Donga Mountain Division and compiled the following report. And of course, we shall be coming back to that report of um, Bustela. But time for us to talk about the strike of uh, drivers to say that truck drivers plying the Ngambetika stretch of the road that's in the known division of the West region of Cameroon have downed their tools and parked their vehicles in a protest demonstration, as Immaculate Fogwe tells us in the following report. Heavy duty trucks queued up along the Gambetika Road in Fumban, Noon Division, West Region of Cameroon. The long queue is as a result of a technical fault experienced by the ferry transporting vehicles across the ruptured bridge. We make two days for this place. We don't come reach where. We have spent two days on the same spot because the ferry is not operational. Those transporting perishable goods are counting their losses as a result of the situation. We are not even sure of when we are going to leave this place. So we did for Anna, we don't know whether we will come off Anna which day. The frustrated drivers equally decry exorbitant sums of money that ranges to from 80,000 to 1 million, which they have to pay so their vehicles are transported to the other side of the river by the ferry. Since 2018, a prefectural order was signed by the senior divisional officer regulating the amount expected to be paid by each truck driver ferried across the river. The amount is too much. Retailers are finding it hard to sell most of their products due to high transportation costs. Transporters say the only way to resolve the problem is to construct a bridge. They are pleading on the government to come to their aid. To be able to get yourself identified either with a birth certificate or a national identity card in one subdivision, you will have to travel over several kilometers from Mwa to Nkambe, which is the chief town of the Donga Mountain Division. That is just one of the many factors that display how much Mwa has been neglected by the central government in Cameroon. These are the declarations of the people of Mwa who say Mwa has <coughs> bad roads with no electricity, despite being the largest and one of the oldest subdivisions in Cameroon with over 42 villages and over 130,000 inhabitants. Mbustela traveled from Bamenda to Mwa and compared the following report. Sabongari is about one hour drive on a bumpy and dusty road away from Mwa, where Brigadier General Kavale was visiting. The population of Sabonga turned out not only to welcome an August guest who was passing through the town, but to present what has been their pains for years. Most of the youth in Sabonga they are 
focus on business. Uh, that is what is keeping us in Sabungari. It's rather unfortunate that we are not uh, we are not we are not employed with the government because most of what who have been applying or who have been writing competitive exam they don't employ us. So that's why we find ourselves in the domain of business in Sabungari here. And the business mostly is international trade with the people of Nigeria. That is Gembutam. The road network too, and within more subdivision is not only narrow and stony, but steep. A real struggle for the majority farming populations to get their farm produce to the market. As a consequence, much of it gets bad in the farms. You not get good roads. We the work corn, we the work granite, we the work beans, we the work yam. We don't know who's up our cellar. Created in 1963, Mwa subdivision, according to Mayong Lawrence, mayor of Mwa, is the oldest and the most neglected subdivision in Cameroon. Mwa is endowed with touristic attractions like the Rum Rock and the famous Mbuku waterfall in Adere, but Mwa subdivision is not electrified. The impact of the lack of electricity in the subdivision is felt the most at the Mwa District Hospital, where the nurses are unable to carry out diagnosis without the use of a generator. We are managing our solar data, cannot even run some of the equipment that we have to better manage our patient. We have been managing most of the time we use but the RD therapy diagnostic test, which might not really be enough as using microscopy. With a surface area of about 175 kilometers square and a population of over 120,000 inhabitants, our subdivision has no identification unit. The people People here either have expired national identity cards or they don't have them at all. If I want to go for dinner, my identity don't finish. Person don't die for there, not fit for God. For seeking identity. Yes. As we go make identity now for banking. Magwa, you don't have me for go. If you not get money, you not go fit. The inhabitants describe the lack of these documents as a profitable business for the security forces who extort at least a thousand francs from them at security checkpoints. They go now drive from uh, Magua banking before we make identity. When you want work now for go some place, they will who we for road. They take money when you reach for this position. They take money one thousand. They take money two thousand. For so some time. Their cry is therefore to see the creation of identification units in Mwa. With the armed conflict in Anglophone Cameroon, the population of Mwa seemed confined. They also wish for a sustainable return to peace. In his response, Brigadier General Carvalho, commander of the Fifth Joint Military Region, stressed on the need for the population to collaborate with the Defense and Security Forces. Defense and Security Forces need your full collaboration to better protect you and your properties. You must inform them of anything wrong in the community, whether it is in Yamba North, Mpunte, Mbo or Yamba Central, children must go to school. We want to see future ministers, generals, governors, medical doctors, engineers, journalists, and so on from our subdivision. While on the three days visit in Wa, Brigadier General Kavale supervised a health campaign carried out by military doctors in the locality, inaugurated a block of four classrooms renovated by the Ministry of Defense, as well as gave the kickoff for a peace and unity tournament between the youths of Sabongari and Wa. As Brigadier General Kavale drives from Wa through Sabongari, Magba, Fumba, and Subafusam, the dusty and bumpy nature of the road reminds him of the plight of the population. Coming up with talking points, ladies and gentlemen, still for us. On talking points today, we're receiving an economic and financial analyst. We are receiving Bonkem Eric Baba. Bonkem Eric, thanks for accepting our invitation. Thank you for me, Armstrong Sander, for this great uh, and honorable uh, 
uh, of the invitation to this prestigious uh, uh, television channel. Um, I'm so grateful to be here and to be part of this program. Thank you. Now we are very concerned with end of year activities, festivities, and the impact of uh, the prices of basic commodities on Cameroonians. Unfortunately, reports we've had in markets in the economic capital city Douala show that prices of basic commodities are on the rise. How do we explain that? Yeah, thank you for that uh, wonderful question. For me, I'm strong. I will, uh, first of all, before uh, coming into your question, answering your question, I want to take us back uh, to the normal uh, normal economic atmosphere. Uh, in the normal economic atmosphere, we have the demand and the supply uh, cave. Now, when the uh, uh, demand cave is more than the supply cave, it is obvious that crises are supposed to, to, to rise. So it is a normal thing. But the worst about it is that when it comes now to uh, 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 to festive period is very normal that that is when people must have saved enough and they want to showcase I mean what they can offer and then to showcase what uh, uh, their, their financial strength. Uh, strength to their families and people around they obviously want to spend without any control that is a problem that's an economic problem that we, we, we have been facing uh, but, but the issue now is that um, in the normal economy when it comes to the issue of price rises what is the normal cause what causes uh, prices to rise is that what, what are the main causes of prices of yes. basic that's, community? Yeah, that's exactly my question. Yeah, when uh, they talk of basic communities, I want to, uh, commodities, I want to uh, take an example of uh, uh, normal maize that they produce in our villages and uh, 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 palm oil that have been getting uh, information that uh, they have been imported to Cameroon. That is really <coughs> sad news ever because those are the basic commodities that they produce. In, those uh, are things uh, that at least Cameroon should be producing. In my village, we produce produce the maize in huge quantities, we produce beans in huge quantities, and then in the Mbembe area, I mean, southwest, in Fako, we produce oil in huge quantities. All those are things that are not supposed to be imported, however, but I'm surprised that, that they are being imported. Yeah, we have, uh, we have issues, and all of those things, they, they have reasons, because when they are more, or actually when the demand is more than the supply, we discover that... Uh, okay, we are forced to go and uh, uh, import them. We are Russia forced to, yes. Because vast the land and of course uh, everything, the human resource to be able to have uh, uh, palm oil produced in Cameroon, maize produced in Cameroon in a very large quantity. Those are uh, factors that we are having. Okay. Enough of them that favor the production of uh, maize and, and corn. I'm just taking them as basic, basic that's, I'm take, taking the example of basic commodities. Because normally uh, things that we are produced, we are good at producing them. We are supposed to specialize and produce them in huge quantity okay. as such that it can actually meet the demand. Well, unfortunately, of, uh, unfortunately, that's unfortunately that is not the case in Cameroon. Now, these are. Uh, it looks like it's a factor that is lacking in the strategy of the local and central government. Yeah, normally the, strategies the first it. the first thing is that I want to talk on is the fact that well, we always lay more blame on the government because I mean they are the umbrella of everything. But the first blame goes to uh, you and I, all of us. I mean, the, when we don't have a thought, we don't think about uh, how to create it. It is always a problem because uh, what is happening now is that all of us we are more thinking of everybody when you finish uni the university. You are more thinking of how the government will employ you, and the government cannot be employ everybody. And the fact that we all are only expecting, we are expecting to be given, that right. is a problem. Yes, but so according to basic commodities. Num yeah. So, num okay. so normally we are, uh, normally what we, uh, uh, I want to so much talk about is the issue of the basic commodities. Basic commodities that are in that are lacking in the markets and today. things that are to be produced in Cameroon are supposed to be are produced, supposed in, to be produced in Cameroon. In what quantity. are the causes of these shortages? That is what we I want us to so much be talking about this evening. Yeah, just go ahead. Yeah, well, the first thing that uh, has been hindering us uh, uh, from actually showcasing what we are able to produce uh, uh, is the fact that we don't have 
an international market in Cameroon. An international market is a market where each buyer or seller, seller from a foreign country easily comes and buy. Now in Cameroon, it's very simple for a Nigerian to come into Akko subdivision, to come through Mwa, to come through the far north, they buy from the Cameroon without, without any control. This has been causing a lot of food products to be uh, uh, leaking around the corners, to be going out of the country without any control. That is something that the government would have looked so much into by creating this uh, international market where any, any foreign buyer when the person comes to Cameroon the person goes straight into the, the international market where they only buy those products at the world price at that level and then uh, what will happen in the community is the, uh, is that the price the normal prices are uh, they are supposed to be maintained like today yes. I hear I hear <coughs> that the issue the, the corn uh, corn in maize in Cameroon it is costing uh, uh, 2,500 francs but when you come to Douala it's almost 4,500 4, to 5,000 the prices are not harmonized they are not harmonized okay, so the other factors yeah. so the other the, the other shoe, uh, issue is uh, uh, the, the, ed, uh, the education, the educational transformation, uh, which is not really the best in Cameroon. We need to really train our people to, allow, uh, to, to know how to create and to know how to enter into the market, uh, I mean, uh, 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 with innovative ideas on how to create and then transform the, the, normal, uh, 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 the normal sector, our Cameroon sectors, the, the production sector. I but, mean, but Rick, I'm sure you've got a lot of these factors that can provoke what we're experiencing now in market but when we are already into the, 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 the situation like we're facing now and some persons you rightly indicated have got the strength the financial strength to be able to stand up to the challenges in the market now others unfortunately have not got and they are the people crying because when they go to the market they are not able to get things like they would have loved to get with the little means they have what do we do for me, Armstrong, this is when now the government needs to come in. I mean, into uh, harmonizing the pri the prices of goods and services. That is why c price control is especially at this festive at period. this festive period. Because uh, you hear of normally uh, uh, the price of chick uh, chicken is uh, uh, three thousand five hundred francs, but when you go out now, you will discover that the price of a normal chicken is around five thousand five hundred francs. How do you explain That's that? That's quite unfortunate. Normally, normally Fish what? Yeah, alike. Uh, uh, we, we uh, 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 somebody w was passing by complaining that normally macro was it used to be uh, 1,200 francs today is 1,500 francs when you go enter into uh, uh, those stores and then you discover the prices are, are, are rising the, f the highest thing for us to solve this problem is, uh, is for the government to come in now and see into it how they can uh, uh, remedy the situation because we, when uh, things like this happens there are people that they, they, they are very comfortable with it because they have the source of income but those that do not have have how becomes of the what becomes of them sorry and they always suffer meaning whenever a decision is being taken it is always taken that would be in, in favor, favor of, favor of the very everybody, everybody, okay everybody but in Cameroon it is unfortunate yes it is unfortunate that when they're making a decision the most most of the time they favor by the wealthy those that can afford which is not the case and it looks like the, 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 the government too is in a very tight corner because we are just uh, from the budgetary session at the national assembly where we're having the government like planning to uh, get income trying to tax people on associations and what we call in cameroon jangis common jangis and having people to come in with money do you even think that the government will be able to uh, remove some um, uh, budget i mean a part of its budget to be able to subsidize prices in the market subsidize enterprises producing things like uh, oil and the rest of the things that are basic needs for cameroonians First of all, there are two ways that the government can intervene into okay. prices of products in the market. The, the first way is that the government can issue, e easily uh, uh, tax the people. Well, the moment the government taxes uh, the population, that particular moment prices of products are uh, I ask. Taxing a product and it causes the prices of uh, uh, price of that product to okay increases the tax on the products if the government wants to increase the tax of uh, uh, the taxes of a product it is that is even advantageous most of times because when the government wants to inc encourage the local market or to encourage the, the production of local uh, uh, products they will obviously give uh, taxes of, of imported products in relation to that that is uh, to say that okay they should tax similar products that are impo uh, imported. Be imported like for example when the government wants to encourage uh, 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 production of, uh, of oil, palm oil within Cameroon, they will simply tax uh, uh, the importation of uh, that's, uh, increased taxes on the taxes importation, of palm, importation of palm oil from outside. That is uh, an advantage when taxes, when taxes, is when government policies uh, 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 included. 
Uh, the next um, thing is yes, uh, we'll, we'll get there. Unfortunately, we're not going to be going through the facts. I think that I think they are well developed there, ladies and gentlemen. We are unfortunately come to the end of this program. We thank you very much. We sure shall be having you. Uh, that I can assure you in the next edition of uh, Talking Points, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you very much for your keen attention. <laughs> Still taking us, we are taking you to your own day for newspapers. Back to Duala, we shall be having a kinosua for this Wednesday edition of Sir Charlene Otto.